In this video, I'm going to take you through the process that I use to create a concrete candle vessel using 3D printing and silicone molding. And before we get started, I want to show you some of the many, 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 many failures along the way. I use Shaper 3D on an iPad for my designs. And here's the overall vessel with the outer shell, the inner um, master that will be imprinted on the silicone when I pour it. Um, you see on the base here, I have an interlocking piece to, kind of, to try to keep the silicone in the, uh, the outer shell. It, it helps to make sure it doesn't bleed out too much, even though it, it does a little. And then I have an inside core, which I make out of TPU, which is like squishy rubber, uh, because you'll see when I'm pulling it apart, it's very difficult, difficult to get that piece out. And then this last piece, make sure that the inner core has structure to it. And here are all the parts printed out. Again, most of it is in PETG, um, except for that, that core piece, which is TPU. And there's the, the master that I'm gonna use for this demonstration. Here are those two outside pieces that interlock in the base. And then when you stick that, that round piece there in that indention in the base, it centers everything. That's the design, nice and tight. You see where the silicone will eventually be poured. And then this is that piece that holds, that, that gives me the center, as well as holds things tight on top as well. And then there's that TPU piece because the PETG does not want to come out of the silicone. So I'm using TPU for that portion of the design. So this is what it's like all put together. And now it's time to pour the silicone. I'm not gonna make you watch a long video on that, but I do use this Nick Pro. I just, the cheapest stuff I could find on Amazon. It is the Platinum Cure, so it's it's safe for food, um, which I do make some other candy things and whatnot goofing around, but um, very easy to work with. This silicone is just a one for one by weight. Um, so I have this little cheap scale to help me get my measurements. And I did, I do use this plastic paint cup, I guess. I don't know what you call it, paint jug, um, because when you're done, the silicone just comes right out, comes out really nice. And just pour it in, pour both parts, and then stir, stir, stir. Make sure you scrape the sides of the bucket. Um, you don't want to have it not get cured. And I purchased a small vacuum chamber to try to degas the, the silicone, which it works really well, which you'll see here in this video. I don't, it's not always necessary, depending on the type of silicone you do buy, but um, I, I want to make sure I get as few bubbles as I can. And here's the, the mold ready to be poured. Um, you said I did put some tape on there to hold that TPU piece up so it doesn't uh, fall to the bottom of the, uh, the silicone, obviously gravity. Um, and then when you're pouring silicone, everything I've learned is you, the higher you pour, the better. It's called the waterfall method, I think, with the intent of getting rid of whatever bubbles or sorry, gas, air might still be in the silicone. So um, really, it's just a slow and steady process. Silicone is really easy to clean up, so it's not that big a deal if you do spill, but it's also pretty expensive, so you don't want to waste it. And you'll see at the end, I did misjudge how much I needed. Uh, but the beauty of silicone is you just mix a little bit more up and pour more. Uh, it sticks to itself perfectly. You never even know that you were short on a pour. And here's the finished product in the uh, in the vessel. You see it did obviously leak a little bit, and that's expected. Um, it's very difficult to seal it up, and I'm not going to use hot glue like a lot of people do. I think it's just an unnecessary step for as little waste as there is. But um, you'll see it can be difficult to demold it um, as you'll see throughout this process sorry the camera work isn't great because i had to use a lot of leverage against my body in a few cases but you i think you'll get the gist so now you see that i've got the outer shell off and it's just really time to peel it away from the plastic master which this first part is fairly easy to do um, but then you just essentially have to turn it inside out to try to get that that inner tpu piece out um, just a lot of leverage and a lot of working it. Uh, it is a little tight, and but it, it's amazing the, the quality that the silicone pulls off of that master that whatever it is you're 
your molding. So you'll see it takes a little bit of effort. Now, ultimately, I did turn it back inside out to try to get this TPU piece out. And um, I did have to use some pliers here trying to get it apart from the silicone, even though it is, it doesn't cure to it, it does stick to it pretty well. Um, so I had to do a lot of leverage, a lot of work on it. But eventually it does come out and uh, it should be reusable. That was one of my intentions when I designed it is I don't want to have to print new parts every time I want to do a mold. So it should be reusable. But now it's time to get the inner part out. And really it's not stuck. There's just a suction at the very base of it. And that once you kind of pop it loose, it comes out nice and clean. After a little leverage and a lot of sweat, it finally came out nice and clean. And the last thing to do is pop it back inside out so you see what it looks like and when it's ready to uh, to pour concrete in. All right, so now it's time for something a little messier, uh, the actual mixing and pouring of the concrete. I use a product called Cementol from Home Depot. Um, it's fairly easy to work with. All you do is you mix it with water and you stir it. One of the things that I've learned as as I've been testing a lot is I start in a cup with just a little bit of the powder, the cement, and get it nice and smooth. And as I add more dry to it and add more water, et cetera, it stays the consistency that you want and it doesn't clump up on the spoon or in the bottom of the cup. And it's it's a lot harder when it starts clumping up, especially with you know something simple like a plastic spoon like I use here. So I start with just a little bit and add, 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 and until you get it to about the consistency of pancake batter is what I've I've learned from my YouTubing so far. So now it's time to pour, and you're going to notice something right away that uh, I should have done first, but I didn't want to reshoot the video. So I poured the concrete, again, kind of like the waterfall method, but I didn't put it inside my plastic housing, that same mold I used. I flipped, I flipped mold over essentially, and I can use it as structure around it to, uh, because the silicone is pretty squishy and, and so it just adds a little structure. But anyway, I put it on after I pour the concrete, um, ended up fine, but just so you know, that's the proper way to do it. But then when you're, you're done pouring, then you just need to shake it and essentially vibrate it so that it fills all the gaps and hopefully gets rid of air bubbles and things like that. It's it's probably never going to be perfect with concrete, but it does help. And then I just use a muscle gun. I don't know what, don't know exactly what these are called, but essentially to vibrate the entire thing. And again, the intent is to get rid of air bubbles and make sure the concrete settles into the intricate details of whatever the mold is. So that's what I use. And then the last thing I do is Use a level to make sure it is level, as level as possible on whatever tray or desk you're using, just to make sure the base of the the vessel is flat, as flat as it can be. And then the last thing I do is every 15 minutes, I spray it with a little bit of water. Um, I, I've heard this helps to reduce or help not crack. So um, that's about it. And then with the cementol, it only takes about an hour for it to cure hard enough to be able to demold. So um, you'll see demolding is actually fairly easy process, a little easier than the demolding of the silicone itself. Uh, you can still get that suction effect in the the hole of the vessel, but overall it's it's not too too tough of a process to demold it from the concrete. And here's the finished vessel fresh out of the mold. You can see the air bubbles here and there. Still trying to figure out my technique to to reduce those even more, but not too shabby. Then I also wanted to create a simple lid. So this is just an open face mold, essentially. Uh, very simple to create. I didn't want to show you the whole process of that, but I use the same general technique for the reusing the 3D printed pieces to then add structure to the mold while it's drying. So pour the concrete, shake it, good to go. And the demolding on these open face molds are, is super, super simple. Um, you'll see it takes five seconds to, to pull it out. It's a nice, nice clean lid for the, uh, the candle vessel. Pretty easy. And here's the final product. 
I think they're pretty good, but I'm always looking for feedback. So if anybody has any ideas or thoughts or comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching. Oh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.